everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute version of what I'm going to refer to as the inverted fold bow and again it's another one that I've translated from Spanish um, so like I said this is super cute, this is in 1.5 inch ribbon this version is in 2 inch ribbon and the one that we're going to do today is the big one in 3 inch ribbon and that works out to be it is six inches wide and four and a half. So six inches long, four and a half wide. So like I said, it's quite a big one, especially when you compare it to its two inch version, which is only four and a bit to two and a half, three. And like I said, the one inch, the one and a half, I haven't tried one inch yet, is three by two and a half if you add a base bow okay so like I said this is what we're working on today and I have already got all my ribbon ready like I said this three inch version you need two pieces of six inch ribbon which obviously I have already heat sealed everything so I've heat sealed all my ends and I've also folded both those two six inch pieces in half and heat creased the two pieces what I've done with the two pieces here, which is four pieces, two patterned, two plain. So I've got the purple and this gorgeous marble ribbon, and that is four times nine and a half. So like I said, two plain, two patterned, four times nine and a half inches. And then for the base bow, I've got two purple in two 14 inches. And again, I've already folded them in half, and I've also folded down these like so in order to help us get our alignment on the dirt well it's like a flowing tux bow instead of a double tux bow I'll show you this is a flowing tux as you can see you've got the tuxes layered on top of each other instead of tucked inside like a peak bow um, and it just gives you like a slightly different look it looks more like the shape of this you see so it gives a similar effect to the the actual bow shape which means that when it's hidden behind it gives a more like uniform nice look okay so like I said that's why we're going to do that one today instead so like I said I have heat sealed the four pieces of nine and a half like I said I've just taken those and I've gone like this in the blue bit of the flame the blue clear bit of the flame heat seal them together and go like that and do that on all four edges and the main thing about this one is you have to do half of it left, half of it right to get the pockets that these bits sit in. So like I said, I'm going to show you how to do that and make sure that they stay the right way around. Okay, wait a second, just getting everything ready. And I've got a matching little bit of 9mm for my centrepiece in a second. And we're going to attach this to a 50mm alligator clip. Okay, so just put this out of the way. And we'll start with the base bow, because like I said, that's the most simple piece. And like I said, it's a slightly different look to the tux bow to what you're probably traditionally expecting. So, like I said, folded everything in half, folded my edges over. So I've got a nice clear cream crease here, crease here. And then you can use that to get your exact guide directly onto that crease in the middle. Same this side. straight over those two creases below and pin on the centre and then when you fold those upwards like so you've got perfect alignment repeat this one exactly the same in on your crease in on your crease pin the centre Like so. Fold it up. Your edges are completely aligned. And if you take these two, as you can see, 
perfectly exactly the same size as each other. And what you want to do is obviously these are three inch wide. You want to do a one and a half inch overlap because that would be halfway up each side of the bow, like so. So that's one and a half. Okay, take one of your pins this side and pin through. center there so you've attached both pieces and this is what you get so this is the front this is what back look back looks like and we're going to do eight stitches to get four creases on the back and like i said i'll show you once i finish counting because like i said i don't count very well on camera not without making tons of mistakes and having your thing come and stay on your crease when you do this as well. Okay, so in one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that is in one, two, three, out, and on your back you've got one, two, one, two, and what you want to be making sure when you're doing these overlapping ones is you've got your two centre stitches on your back over the la overlap piece, and the same on the front, you want the first one that goes over you want that to go over that first overlap, one across, and then one going out and over on that side. So, let me see if I can make them a bit darker for you. You won't be able to see this because this will be in the actual bed. But can you can see, like I said, that's over the join that side and over that side over one of the join pieces and that one's gone right on the edge of the join piece over and then out okay so like i said i'll do a placement guide to show you because like i said if you don't get this right on these flowy ones again it affects the shape and it doesn't sit how it should so you want to pull that together so you get your four creases and wrap round as normal like so And these look really pretty if you mix colours, so if you did like one in the marble and one in the purple, looks really pretty. I tend to do the print on top if I do print rather than too plain, but like I said, it's just a different effect to a base bow than like I said, a peak bow or a twisted duo or any of those kind of looks or even just a basic double tuck. It's just a little bit of a different look. And these are actually really cute. Just by themselves. So if you wanted to make just this flowing tux, that's the look you get. So that's going to be a base bow, so we're going to put that out of the way for now. And for our main bow, I have already folded some of these. So what I have done is obviously we're doing it the colour side up and what you want to do is you want to start one fold upwards and you will need a couple of clips and you want to start this other fold down so you don't want both of them going the same direction otherwise when you try and put your everything together it won't build correctly. So like I said one down one up okay and then the same with your other one down for this one up
for this one okay and we're always going to fold this crease in so that crease goes in then you can move one of your clips and pin that centered and then what we do is again take that one over like so so you've got the color at the back so this is the one we took down as you can see so plain side up pattern side down triangle down triangle up fold over so that that is in like so and then we want this color this way over to give you this pocket and you'll have a little bit of a leftover bit which we can cut down in a minute and that is one side so like so we'll cut that off so it all lines up but that's what it should look like at the moment and then like i said this one we've started this up so triangle up triangle down clip clip fold our triangle in move this clip so it's there okay and again you want your color to come up behind here and then you can move your clips okay so this is going to be this side so that's this side okay and that's this side and the reason we fold in is because that's the pocket that it sits in so like i said that's the pocket of the corner that our tux bow stylish pieces sit in okay and like i said i always do nine and a half just so you've got like a little bit of work so like i said if it does go over a little bit you've got bits to cut down instead of having it not perfectly align up to your triangle uh, your, your square shape okay so trim that down like so and don't forget to re reheat seal all your layers and again this is another one where you want to be getting all your stitches perfectly through all your layers because if you don't that's where this style of bows start to go wrong and again cut off here it's normally about a centimeter half a centimeter and a half maximum extra that you'll be looking at so there you go so like i said you should have this pocket effect okay so there we go and then we've got our black pieces because like i said i want this to really pop and they are six inches long and like i said i've heat sealed folded in half okay and now the trick on this is move that one out of the way you want to slot this in and you want to go same as we just did with the half with the flowing tucks you want to go an inch and a half up so that's an inch and a half and the other trick is to make sure that your edge you want that above your triangle here so it needs to be above, above that so as you can see that is a bit further up than that triangle so it doesn't pop loose when we add our stitches in okay so that's one side and i'm just going to put the clip back here to hold that as we're stitching and we do the same this side only we want the open side like i said the open side's that side so we want this open one this way and again pop that in that pocket the other thing is is check that both of these are even 
and that you've not got one bow piece that's bigger. than the other so you can see so like I said they're both the same height top and bottom like I said just pop that in there if you've got a little bit of excess again on this again don't be afraid to trim it down and reheat seal those edges and the same this side if you had any had any like I said don't be afraid to trim it down and have it look all nice and even so where have I just put my needle sorry about that I had my needle fall off the edge of my desk and I couldn't locate it for a second. I've had to put my craft glasses on. So start this side from above and we're going to do eight stitches. And I'll show you the placement once it's all in. So one, two, three, And your last stitch needs to come up we need to get through that layer at the bottom we need to go through both sides of that triangle there and then through all the layers up through here so as you can see one two three four five six layers okay and that's vitally important for the structure of this this one and then we start from this corner so this triangle point here and again we want to go from above we want to be making sure that we're going through both sides of that triangle and through these two layers so like i said don't be afraid to adjust them open and make sure you're capturing all the bits of the layers you need to like this so like I said all of those together because if you miss even one this bit will pull apart and it won't sit how it should do we'll repeat exactly the same amount of stitches this side Spread them out a little bit more and do them a little bit closer to the edge. Like I said, try and make them as even as possible. Okay, that's better. And we've got a little bit fraying in there, so I'm just going to heat set it off. And as you can see, you've got four creases there, and we've got four creases on this side. So, just pull them open a little bit for you so you can see. So, in one, two, three, out, in one, two, three, out. And I've tried to make sure that I've got that stitch going across that corner point there and the same on the back. You should have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that third one should always be coming through the last little bit of those overlap bits to make sure everything stays nicely lined up. 
Okay, so once you're happy with everything, you can pull your cinch like so. And like I said, you'll get four creases on this side, four creases on this side. And then what I do is do them nice and tight and squared off. And then we go round again, right through where your original stitch point starts. And like I said, with this, don't be afraid to use your desk to push the needle up for your layers and this is also why I use the stronger eight centimeter darning needles instead of basic sewing needles and again line your four creases up this side square them all off make sure that they're centered okay and again through the side where you started your stitch line up all your layers use that desk to push them through okay and once we're happy with everything we can now take our clips off that we were using to hold the folds in place and the other thing i do is i give it a little bit of a fluff and again i'm just going to take one stitch over this stop that from pulling over And do it as close to that piece as you can so it can be hidden when we add our wrap round for the center okay i'm just going to do another one nice and tight that stops up from pulling over and then just do your back stitch however you personally prefer there we go so this is the effect that you'll get like i said that's your little pocket now this can happen so it can come out so if you're not happy or you're worried it's gonna slip out like that what you do is take this piece out and all you want that was on the edge of the glue gun be very careful open this nice and wide get it sat exactly where you want it and just do that and then that will sit in nicely and again do the same this side pull it out so it sits on top put the teeniest tiniest drop of glue on that top corner there Pop that pocket open a bit, sit exactly where you want it, and just give it a little pinch so it sits where you want it to sit. Okay? Okay. Now we can take our base bow and place that nicely on top. And like I said, you get a little bit of the purple edge underneath. If you wanted a little bit more, you could do 14 and a half or 15. Like I said, whatever is visually most visually appealing to yourself. And I'm just going to thread these through and add the centre. Like I said, if you want to, you can glue the layers and wrap whichever works best for you. I just prefer this method, as we all know. And in the description, we'll have the measurements for the three inch all the way down to the one inch the one inch though it is going to be so small um if you look at the 1.5 inch in comparison to the three inch um i wouldn't recommend doing the pattern option on the top i would just do it in solid color colors so that you can do only one layer so you only have two pieces at the top to do your fold instead of four and then that way you can do it in two solid colors and still have it look really cute but you won't have so much layering which will bulk up the one inch version too much and it just wouldn't sit how it should so i'll put all the information and any technique changes like less stitches etc in the description as i normally do so from beneath here right on the center There we go 
right through those centre creases. Pull that through. Take this one again from the back, right in the centre, which is this point here. Pull that through. Make sure you're completely happy with where the bow sits. And then wrap round super super tight right on the center like so and like i said the base bow is optional you don't have to do it if you don't want to they look really cute without them as you saw with the halloween version stitch off in back however you like as we know And there, there's our little bow as it is. Got our little matching 9mm and our alligator clip and we're just going to add a touch of glue across here and place that on the back of our bow. Hold that down for a couple of seconds just so it sets. Heat seal on 9mm, add a drop of glue to the back there, open up our alligator clip, make sure it's nice and centred, like so, and wrap round twice. Okay, and the other thing is, is I'm going to add a touch of glue just here to stop that from drifting just a tiny bit. round okay open that up go round again make sure you can't see any of this layer beneath at all okay and cut off now if you do a base bow with this instead of just by itself and I'll show you the difference these centres do get a tiny bit bulky and it can affect the shape of your centrepiece. So as you can see here, I've got like the dips either side of this. This is where adding like a scrunched up middle or an embellishment is perfect because it sort of hides that sort of less visually appealing look. Because as you can see, with just one layer, it's nicely squared as you would expect it to be. So like I said, if you want, like I said, with those, just like I said, add a little little embellishment of some sort. Hold on, see what we've got on my desk. There we go. Good. Find a little embellishment that you like that covers up the centre piece. Or like I said, you could do beaded middle, you could do scrunch middle, and like I said, I'll add the link to the different types of styles of middles that you can do. You could do a knotted middle. Um, let's see, I've got some... thought I had some purple in there by Adobe. That might work. So, if you wanted to do a knotted middle... Do a little knot, like so. Like I said, you could do your little scrunch look instead. You could wrap just one inch ribbon round instead of your nine mil or over the top, and just give it a little bit of a a look. It also sort of balances the shape of the bow as well. Just so you know for your own knowledge and thank you for watching if you need any help or advice on the style of bow or like i said you need any more help or anything like that um, i've got the links to my facebook page and group below i'm always about if you need any questions answering and don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks for watching bye